the Nets outscored the Sixers in game one. That's probably not a game that they can play very often against Philadelphia. It takes an imperfect game for the Sixers to open the door for Brooklyn. The last two games, Philly's been so good offensively, the Nets could not keep up in the third quarter of game two and really the fourth quarter of this game three. They had no answers. They could not stop Philly in a big moment. Well, and they really generated a lot of their offense off of their defense. So whether it was missed shots by the Nets that allowed Philadelphia to get out on the yeah. run or it was uh, turnovers that allowed them to get going and get some easy looks. And we know for any team, when you're getting some of those easy baskets, some easy layups, that allows everything to flow more easily. And because there's so many different weapons on the floor, it seemed like when the Nets would try and take away one aspect or one play, player and opened up the door for some others yeah it, 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 it really was a team effort by Philly right and, and it wasn't one person it was like we're talking about JJ Redick nonstop and he just ha has a, a, a great flow in the second half but then all of a sudden Ben Simmons has a great stretch then Tobias Harris hits another three and we're looking up and we're like he's six for six so I think the Nets did a good job of staying in this game and fighting Rondé Hollis Jefferson came off gave great uh, gave great minutes you look at Karis LeVert where he had his stretch but defensively is the area that they have to key in on they have to do a much better job of just limiting one of those guys yeah. one or two of those guys and we haven't even mentioned jimmy butler no like he, it's he, it keeps on going yeah so there's just a lot of areas for improvement and they weren't that far off so i think that's encouraging news